they started making these like giant offers to uh you know a lot of people on our team mm -hmm. um you know like 100 million dollar signing bonuses more than that comp per year this is crazy uh, and i'm actually it is crazy i'm really happy that at least so far uh none of our best people have decided to take them up on that so yeah meta just officially became a company we need to worry about first they acquired scale ai and brought on ceo alexander wang in a 14 billion dollar deal and now they've supposedly poached multiple top researchers straight out of OpenAI. Plus, they're looking to raise another 29 billion for Zuckerberg's new super intelligence lab. Meanwhile, we just got new details on OpenAI's mysterious AI hardware device, thanks to a lawsuit filed against them. And that's just a start. From Google's breakthrough alpha genome to Grok4 rumors, to Anthropic's research on emotional AI. Here's everything you missed this week in AI. Let's get into it. All right, so here's the latest on the Meta OpenAI situation. Meta has reportedly hired four more researchers from OpenAI. Earlier in the week, TechCrunch reported that Meta had hired influential OpenAI researcher Trapit Banzal. And according to the Wall Street Journal, they also hired three other researchers from the company. That puts the total now at eight researchers stolen from OpenAI, with the new hirees including these four names. I'm honestly not even going to try to pronounce them because I know I will completely mess them up. But while this move might seem aggressive, it's only a part of Meta's larger plans. As I mentioned earlier, they recently acquired Scale AI for $14 billion and made the CEO Alexander Wang head of their new super intelligence lab. And now they're seeking an additional 29 billion from private capital to fuel this push and to build more data centers. So while Meta has been struggling to keep up in the AI race, they definitely have the resources to compete with the other big players if they wanted to. And it seems like Zuckerberg has finally decided to go all in. If you're wondering what Sam Altman thinks about this, about Meta actively trying to steal their top talent, well, here's a recent clip of Altman addressing exactly that. Check this out. Speaking of social, actually, can we can, we, can I ask you about the whole uh, meta scale? Thing? Of course. So, uh, what's the, what's the situation there? Look, I've I've heard that Meta thinks of us as their biggest competitor, and you know I think it is rational for them to keep trying. Their current AI efforts have not worked as well as they've hoped, and I respect like being aggressive and continuing to try new things. And, and I, and I, again, given that I think this is like rational, I expect that if this one doesn't work out, they'll keep trying new ones after that. I remember once hearing Zuck talk about how, you know, Google in the early days of Facebook, it was rational for them to try social, even though it was like clear to people at, at Facebook that that was not going to work. And I feel a little bit similar here, but they started making these like giant offers to uh, you know, a lot of people on our team, mm -hmm. um, you know, like $100 million signing bonuses, more than that comp per year. This is crazy. Uh, and I'm actually, it is crazy. I'm really happy that at least so far, uh, none of our best people have decided to take them up on that. I think that people sort of look at the two paths and say, all right, OpenAI has got a really good shot, a much better shot at actually delivering on super intelligence uh, and also may eventually be the more valuable company. But I think the strategy of a ton of upfront guaranteed comp. And that being the reason you tell someone to join, like really the degree to which they're focusing on that and not the work and not the mission. Um, I don't think that's going to set up a great culture. Uh, and, you know, I hope that we can be the best place in the world to do this kind of research. Uh, I think we built a really special culture for it. And I think that we're set up such that if we succeed at that, and a lot of people on our research team believe we will, or we're, we have a good chance at it, then everybody will do great financially. And it's, I think it's incentive aligned with like mission first and then economic rewards and everything else flowing from that. So I think that's good. There's many things I respect about Meta as a company, um, but I don't think they're a company that's like great at innovation. And I think the special thing about OpenAI is we've managed to build a culture that is good at repeatable innovation. And I think we understand a lot of things that they don't about what it takes to succeed at that. But I don't know. It's been like, in some sense, I think it's been a clarifying thing for our team. Wish I, them luck. So yeah, he's clearly not too happy about it. 
Now, speaking of Sam Altman, he actually found himself in yet another copyright lawsuit, this time from an AI hardware company called I.O., who's suing OpenAI for the new AI hardware device they're planning to create called I.O. They right here. The filings are part of a trademark dispute lawsuit filed this month by I.O. That's I.O. with a Y, a Google-backed hardware startup developing custom molded earpieces that connect to other devices. For the last year, OpenAI executives and former Apple leaders now working at I.O. That's I.O. without a Y, have vigorously researched in-ear hardware devices according to filings submitted in I.O.'s lawsuit. So basically, I.O. with a Y claims OpenAI knew about their product for years. Apparently, their CEO even tried to sell it to OpenAI repeatedly, but was turned down. And now, as we know, Sam Altman has teamed up with Johnny Ive, the legendary iPhone designer, to create OpenAI's own AI hardware device called I.O. So yeah, I.O.'s claiming OpenAI not only rejected them, but then turned around and made a nearly identical product with a nearly identical name. What you're seeing on screen now is IO's actual device, which honestly looks a lot like the leaked renders and rumors we've heard about OpenAI's version. Without going too deep into it, I just think this is a weird move from OpenAI. Like, why even put yourself in that position? Anyway, onto some other news. Apple who just like Meta hasn't exactly been living up to their potential in this AI race, has been looking to make a major move of their own. Apparently, they've been eyeing to acquire Perplexity, a major AI company that would certainly shake things up. There's not many details, as nothing has really happened yet, and it's still very early, but they're reporting that Apple is thinking of offering an AI-based search engine in the future. And acquiring Perplexity would obviously be a much faster way of doing that. So we'll definitely be keeping our eye on this as well. Now, while we're speaking about all the big AI players, we might as well talk about XAI. You're probably wondering, what the hell is happening with Grok 3.5? I mean, it's been weeks since Elon Musk said it would be coming. And well, I think it might actually be cancelled. Because they're only talking about Grok 4 now which is supposedly coming just after July 4th. So obviously don't pay too much attention to the date, it could definitely change. But XAI researchers have been hyping this thing up like crazy, claiming it will be a bigger jump than Grok 2 to Grok 3 was, and that the world is simply not ready for it. So we'll see if it actually lives up to the hype, and if it actually drops next week, I'm certainly hoping it does, and I'll of course be making a video on it as soon as it's released. Now, speaking of delays, whatever happened to DeepSeek R2? It feels like it's been nearly a month now that we're awaiting its imminent release. Well, apparently US export controls are to blame. DeepSeek has been struggling to acquire top-of-the-line NVIDIA chips, and they said that even if R2 was ready, they literally just wouldn't be able to run it. The CEO also said that he is not happy with performance, and that is also part of the reason it's been delayed. So another model to look out for that can literally drop at any moment. In other AI news, Google just quietly dropped a literal scientific breakthrough this week, and somehow almost no one noticed. It's called Alpha Genome, a model that takes long DNA sequences as input, processes the data, and then predicts thousands of molecular properties by characterizing its regulatory activity. Essentially, it predicts how your DNA actually works. Now, I already made a full breakdown on this. I'll pop it up on screen for those who are interested. But the short version is, this model helps us understand the non-coding regions of DNA, the parts that don't directly make proteins, but do control how your genes are expressed. And that's a big deal. Because those regions, which make up 90% of the genome, have been a mystery for decades. This kind of breakthrough, while still in the very early stages, could lead to incredible things like personalized medicine, cheaper and faster drug discovery, the ability to edit genes functionally, and maybe even a future where we can literally program biology like it's software. Now, I know that sounds wild, and we're likely still a ways off. 
But alpha genome already works in real world scenarios, and it outperforms every previous tool in nearly every category tested. So yeah, if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check out my last video. Now, Google also quietly released a few other things this week, like Gemini CLI, an open source AI agent that brings Gemini directly into developers' terminals, a great tool for developers. Then there was Gemma 3N, a natively multimodal model that can actually run directly on your mobile device. But what really stole the show, besides of course Alpha Genome, was this, Gemini Robotics on Device. It's Google's first vision language action model to help make robots faster, highly efficient, and adaptable to new tasks and environments without needing a constant internet connection. So I thought this was pretty crazy because it means these robots can actually think, see, and act in real time without having to rely on the cloud, which opens the door to faster, more private, and truly autonomous embodied AI in the real world. Now, here's something I came across this week that was actually quite concerning. According to Expo, for the first time in history, the number one hacker in the US is an AI. They write, earlier this year, Expo became the top hacker in the United States on the Hacker One, outperforming every human participant. It's the first time an autonomous system has done so. Expo can automatically run expert level attacks across all web apps, giving security teams unprecedented scale. And as you can see from this graph, it's gotten much, much better just recently. Now, they do a full deep dive here into how they actually pulled this off. And to be honest, it's way beyond my scope of things. So I'll drop the link in the description for those who are interested. But clearly, this is going to become a major issue in the future if AI continues to get better and better at hacking. Finally, to wrap up this week's AI recap, we have some new research out of Anthropic, where they studied how people use Claude for support, advice, and companionship. As they state, we spend a lot of time studying Claude's IQ, but what about its EQ? That is, what about Claude's emotional intelligence? Well, if we jump straight to the key findings here, they mention that, first of all, effective conversations are relatively rare, and AI-human companionship is rarer still. Only 2.9% of Claude.AI interactions are effective conversations. Although, people do seek Claude's help for practical, emotional, and existential concerns. They show in this graph here that the majority of effective use cases are people using Claude for interpersonal advice and coaching, a bit of psychotherapy or counseling as well, some companionship, and very low rates of romantic and sexual roleplay. While this isn't exactly surprising, it is an interesting benchmark to track over time. I mean, as these AI models become more emotionally intelligent and sound more human-like, it's possible that these numbers can increase over time. I'd also be interested to see this study done on ChatGPT, as it is known to be more psychophantic. Anyways, that's all the AI news for today. Let me know if you enjoyed this recap and which story stood out to you in particular. For me, it was Google's alpha genome. Even though we didn't really get into it in this video, it's still just an incredible breakthrough. Also, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for 10,000 subscribers. I seriously didn't think I would get here this fast. And of course, I couldn't have done it without you guys. So thank you guys so much again for watching and just supporting the channel. I see all of your comments and I can't wait to explore this AI revolution further with you guys. I feel like we truly have an incredible community here. Anyways, as always, make sure to drop a like, hit that subscribe button if you're new, and I'll be catching you guys in the next one.